at this point, we're going to go back and um, go over some more uh, stuff on Laplace transforms. Um, and at this point, this is kind of where, uh, in a lot of classes, you would be introduced to Laplace transforms. If you look at where it falls in our textbook, it kind of falls toward uh, the later part of the book. Um, but because we've introduced it early on, a lot of this is just going to be review. And especially here at the beginning, I'm going to review kind of what we know so far, and then we'll uh, take a few things forward in this lecture, and then in the next lecture we'll uh, learn uh, some extra new things uh, that are useful with Laplace transforms and that give us the ability to solve new types of problems. But for now, what I have up on the screen is just um, some of the Laplace transforms that we've already seen to this point. We've proven some of them using the definition with the integral, um, and others we've um, sort of developed from those. Um, so if you look through this, this should all be familiar. It might be handy to have your Laplace transform table uh, next to you as you go through this, especially with some of the examples uh, later on with finding inverse Laplace transforms, uh, just practicing some more with that. Uh, but a lot of this we've seen before. So for example, uh, the Laplace transform of a constant is C over S, uh, whatever the constant is. So for a simple example, Laplace transform of one is one over s, right? And that was kind of the first one we, we started with um, and then generalized up to this uh, more general constant rule. We also had this idea that the Laplace transform of a constant times a function, well, you can pull the constant out just like you would with a derivative or an integral. And of course, the reason for doing that is that the Laplace transform really just is an integral. Uh, so you can pull the constant out like you would before. These other ones, uh, again, are ones that we've seen before. The Laplace transform of the exponential, the uh, t to the power of n, sine and cosine. And then um, one of the later ones we talked about was this one where you have the product of e to the at and some function. And so what you would do, we've talked about this before, is you'd take the Laplace transform of whatever this function is, and then once you're done with that, you would substitute in s minus a. So for example, if you have the Laplace transform of e to the a t times t to the power of n, well, t to the power of n by itself would look like this, n factorial over s to the n plus one. And adding this exponential modifier just means that we remove the s and replace it with s minus a. Just like that. Same thing with one of the trig functions. So if you have, for instance, e to the at times sine of bt, normally that would look like this if you didn't have the exponential modifier. But since you do, all you do is you take the s and replace it with s minus a. Try that again. There we go. And the same thing with the cosine, of course. Instead of having s on the top, you'll have s minus a. And same thing here on the bottom. So we've seen all these before. Again, this is nothing new. But with that, uh, you can uh, get some access to some new types of functions. Again, when we get to doing inverse Laplace transforms, that's maybe a harder problem because you have to pick out what form your question looks most like. And then once you pick out the form, you have to um, figure out how to, how to modify it to look exactly like that form. So we'll do examples of that. Um, we have seen some of those examples, and we'll see a couple more as we go through. We've also seen this here, the Laplace transform of the derivative, and then we built up from there to the second derivative and then um, higher order derivatives. Um, so again, there's nothing really to say about this other than just to remind you that this is one of the things we know. So for example, let's say I had the Laplace transform of the fourth derivative, what would that look like? So notice again, the pattern is that 
Um, you start with s to whatever power you have, so we'll have s to the fourth, this is the fourth derivative, and then each term the power on s drops a little bit, so the next one would be minus s to the third, and then minus s squared, and then minus s, and then the last one would not have an s on it. And then after that, everything else, uh, the first term has f of s on it. Then the next term starts with the initial value, and we start with the initial value of f, and then every term after that, uh, you take a higher derivative. So we'd have f of zero first, then f prime of zero, then f double prime of zero, then f triple prime of zero. And that ends the pattern, right? So for any um, derivative that you want to work with, you can apply that. Um, so if you wanted to solve a fourth order differential equation, you would need to know how to do the Laplace transform of the fourth derivative and so on. Uh, so we can use this for an example um, to illustrate one of the ones that we already know. Um, remember that the Laplace transform of the sine function is b over s squared plus b squared. And then we're going to uh, note that the derivative of sine of bt is b cosine of bt, of course. So we're going to approach this problem by um, thinking of this as the derivative of that and using the Laplace transform formula for the derivative. And we'll notice that what comes out is exactly what we expect to come out because we already know what this Laplace transform looks like. So it's a little bit redundant, but it's just kind of showing um, how we can use this derivative formula uh, to prove a Laplace transform we already know. So if you think about this, using uh, the formula here, I'll just remind you that it's this one here, the Laplace transform of the derivative is s times the original Laplace transform minus f of zero. So uh, this is going to be s times the Laplace transform of the original function. So that would be b over s squared plus b squared minus f of zero, minus sine of zero. Now, of course, since sine of zero is zero, that just goes away, and you get s b over s squared plus b squared. Now, notice again that the Laplace transform of b cosine bt, since b is a constant, we can pull that out. And we have this equals sb over s squared plus b squared. So naturally, the Laplace transform of the cosine should just be b over, I'm sorry, s over s squared plus b squared, which of course it is. So we already knew that. Uh, it's nothing new. It's just sort of a, a quick verification that whether you approach the problem more directly, whether you approach it using this derivative rule, you get the same answer both ways, which is always nice to to see some verification. So again, as you look through this list, um, none of this is anything new. We've seen all of these before, uh, but just kind of to remind you where we're at so that as we uh, step forward and learn some new stuff, we can still use uh, what we have to this point um, as needed.